Hello, Maverick fans. Welcome to another edition of the Mav Podcast, the first of the 2024-2025 season for UNO Mavericks. John here with me. We're going to talk about a couple new players here to the UNO Mavericks and take a look at uh, what this season kind of holds for them. John, how was your summer before we get started? It was busy. I mean, we haven't seen you or Jolene in person since the uh, NCAA regional in Sioux Falls, which sounds crazy because normally we get together uh, for dinner uh, yeah. during the summer. So it's crazy to think that September's already here. The season is almost upon us. We've got 14 new players on the roster this season, which uh, which is going to be a very uh, different look for this uh, UNO team uh, that we had gotten used to uh, looking at the past couple of seasons. But before we get to that, we've got a couple of housekeeping items off the top. Uh, the preseason open house and scrimmage will be Sunday, September 22nd. Doors open at 3.30 p.m. It'll be the puck drop for the scrimmage at 4.15 p.m. And then after that, there will be a skate with the Mavs and autographs. Uh, season tickets will be available for purchase uh, that afternoon. And of course, uh, apparel will be available for purchase. Uh, Jason, are, uh, are you all planning to attend the open house? Yeah, Lexi has a thing ahead of it. So we're kind of hoping that we'll be uh, we'll be skating in here probably right with the team. But I'm hoping that we can catch it because like you said, with 14 new players, I'm going to need to learn some new numbers and Honestly, I want to see some how some guys do in Baxter. Um, I'm sure you're going to go through it, but a lot of these guys are were portal pickups for us. I'm guessing probably more than what the coaching staff thought they were going to get out of the portal. Uh, and so those are a lot of guys with a lot of experience who didn't come here to ride the bench. And so it'll be it'll be interesting to see the competition level on the ice uh, for something as simple as an inner squad scrimmage. Absolutely right. Uh, always a great time at the open house and scrimmage. So thanks to the UNO athletic department and Baxter arena for putting that together. Yeah. The first game of this season will be an exhibition against uh, Wisconsin on Saturday, October 5th at 6 7 PM. Uh, they will be honoring uh, former UNO coach, Mike Kemp, uh, who, as most of you out there know, started the UNO hockey program back uh, in 1996 for the team's launch in 1997. And he was a longtime assistant uh, with Jeff Sauer at Wisconsin. He was there uh, before he came to UNO. So uh, that will be kind of a nice deal. And I have heard that uh, that Kemp will be uh, available for uh, pictures uh, with fans. So uh, those are two events coming up. Uh, that'll be uh, a lot of fun for you guys uh, to get out there and participate with. Uh, in addition, something new this season uh, for MavPuck.com and the MavPuck cast, we are offering what we call a founding membership for MavPuck.com, a one-time payment of $12 gets you a 12 month membership. So that's $1 a month, Jason. I know you joined. Uh, you'll receive emails when new episodes of the Mav Puck cast are available. You'll get links to Bridget's game previews, reminders about game giveaways and ticket offers, and you'll get supporter credits on the Mav Puck cast. So if you're watching this right now, you're going to see uh, a list of those folks uh, who joined uh, over the course of the last few months. Uh, to support mavpuck.com. Uh, Jason, are you enjoying your membership uh, so far? You and Jolene both joined, and I'm like, you guys don't have to join. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's good, though. Like, I think it's 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 good to support, you know, and it's it's really a buck a month is, is you know, really reasonable for everything that you guys put out with Mav Puck and that stuff. And so I encourage people that are listening and stuff, support it. Um, you know, it's, it's really good stuff. We're kind of in that lull, you know, right when the season ends, the, the portal opens, it's a lot of who's going where kind of stuff. And then it's like, you hit that lull and then the season starts and you really start to get some news and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to what Bridget has to put out, um, you know, every, every week with that. And so good stuff coming. So hopefully, uh, everyone hits that link. I assume you'll put it in the description, right? 
Absolutely right. Your founding membership lasts one year. You get the special $12 founding membership rate, which you will then get in perpetuity as long as you keep your uh, membership going. Uh, but you need to sign up by uh, October 1st to get that special $12 rate. You can visit mavpuck.com forward slash join or click on the join tab at the top uh, of the homepage to sign up for that. If you're not interested in that and you just like to make a donation of any amount, uh, you can certainly do that to support the Mav Puckcast. It helps underwrite our hosting fees, equipment, domains, and service subscriptions for the podcast. So uh, be sure to visit uh, mavpuck.com forward slash donate or click on the donate tab at the top of the Mav Puck website in order to do that. Uh, and we thank you uh, certainly for your support. Uh, we're always working on this, trying to upgrade. And uh, I'm the type of person, Jason, that I would just give stuff away for free. This is why I'm not in charge of the money in our business and Bridget is because <laughs> I just like to do stuff for fun. So as you alluded to, Jason, lots of new players on the team this season. It's going to be an exciting conference season. We've got Arizona State joining the NCHC, uh, which should add an interesting dynamic. I think they're going to be pretty good this season. We will be talking about our NCHC predictions on an upcoming episode, but we've got the 14 newcomers to the UNO roster. I was kind of, in a way, Jason, kind of dreading diving into the season this season because the last two seasons, we haven't had a ton of turnover. So we've kind of been on autopilot talking about some of our uh, favorite players. So this is the first time we've done something like this. Uh, should be fun. Uh, we're going to look at uh, UNO's new defenseman first. Uh, looking at uh, a number of these players, a lot of big, tall defensemen. Uh, that's the way Gabinette and the coaching staff like them. Uh, we've got Aiden Gallagher coming in. He, uh, he's a grad student, a transfer from Northern Michigan. Uh, according to the UNO website, 6'1", 206 pounds. He had six goals and 13 assists in his collegiate uh, career. He had two seasons at Michigan State, two seasons uh, at Northern Michigan. He's an older player. He's 24. Uh, I was watching a, a clip of him on YouTube. Uh, he grew up going to the Great Lakes Invitational with his dad. Always dreamed of playing for Michigan State. Uh, he kind of reminds me of a guy that UNO would have uh, would have recruited back in the old uh, CCHA days when we were in uh, that conference. He looks like he's a smart player, willing to block shots. Uh, Jason, what do you think about uh, Aiden Gallagher? Yeah, I like the the size. I like going after the six foot kids on on defense, and you know, I think the the biggest thing for me we've said before is you know, you're playing the likes of Denver and. Uh, North Dakota, like you really need guys that are willing to to lay it on the line and, and and block shots. And that's kind of what he's known for doing. And so, you know, hopefully uh, he finds a, a fit there and, and can deliver that. Uh, another transfer portal we're looking at Dylan Gratton. He's a junior. He's a transfer from Penn State. He had five goals and 19 assists in two seasons with the Nittany Lions. Uh, he was plus 15 in the 2022-23 season. He was plus one last season. Uh, I watched video of him when he was a player with uh, Sioux City and Juniors. Uh, he seemed like a very mature guy. Uh, sounds like he's a good puck handler who can work it around the offensive zone. Fun fact, he played with uh, current Mav uh, Jacob Gavin and former Mav Cam Berg at Muskegon in the 2019-20 season. Uh, and he played with Griffin Ludke at Sioux City in the 2021-22 season. So there's a connection with uh, with uh, a couple of uh, defensemen uh, who are currently on our roster. Yeah, I think that's going to be, you know, the positive thing for him coming in. Um, you know, the thing that's going to give him the best opportunity is, is that he knows some of those guys having played with them. And so he might find some chemistry, you know, faster than someone else. Um, you know, the, the big thing is, is going to be big 10 hockey is different than NCHC hockey. Uh, can he overcome the differences and, you know, find a way to be productive. And I think what a lot of people say is the hardest, uh, conference in college hockey. Absolutely. Right. Uh, freshman defenseman, uh, coming in this season that we're very excited about Isaiah Norland. 
Uh, he's a Farmington, Minnesota native. Uh, he played the past three seasons for West Kelowna uh, in the BCHL. He had 12 goals and 36 assists in the 2023-24 campaign. He was previously uh, committed to uh, Clarkson. So a uh, big, tall D-man. Uh, what do you think about Isaiah? We're We're excited about him coming in. I think a lot of people have said that he has the assets, the the things that you need to be an NHL caliber defenseman. Um, he's set up to be one of those guys. And I really hope that, that Omaha's the the good fit for him. And she probably should get more credit than what he gets. Yeah. I mean, you look at a guy like Brandon Scanlon, who was here a couple of years ago, was not drafted either, but has proven himself. Uh, he proved himself at UNO and has, he's proven himself in the professional ranks. Uh, yeah. And he was a great find for UNO. Uh, another freshman coming in, and I, I've been pronouncing his name for the last few years, Grammer, but it's Grammer. So Joe Grammer played for Moorhead High, he played the last three seasons with the Des Moines Buccaneers, had two goals and 14 assists during his tenure with the Bucks. Uh, he played with the U.S. under-18 men's select team at the 2022 uh, Glinka Gretzky Cup. Uh, his brother Luke plays for Northern Michigan. As I've said many times uh, on here and online, uh, I love uh, the players who come out of the Minnesota high school hockey ranks uh, who make their way through the USHL. Uh, freshman Marcus Broberg uh, from Sweden, 5'11", 175 pounds. Uh, he describes himself as an offensive defenseman. I listened to a podcast, an hour-long podcast with him that was done by a guy who is doing a podcast where he interviews all of the Swedish players who are playing junior hockey in North America, which I got to tell you, that's a niche podcast there, Jason, but it was... Uh, yeah. But it was pretty interesting. It was good to hear from him. Uh, in the 2022-23 season, he played for Omaha and Waterloo in the USHL. Um, and he played, I think, 15 games for each of those teams uh, due to overseas player limits uh, on the rosters. Uh, he also played for Springfield in the North American Hockey League that season. He spent the 2023-24 season with the Salmon Arm Silverbacks in the BCHL. Sounded like it was a better fit for him. He had four goals and 21 assists last season. His family is athletic and competitive. His brother, Philip Broberg, uh, played the last three seasons in the Edmonton Oilers organization. Uh, it's always fun to get these uh, Euro players coming to UNO, Jason. Yeah, and especially when they uh, put the flags on the sh shoulders and are on the crests on the um, jerseys. It's always nice to see uh, some of those, uh, we'll say, out-of-town guys. Um, I think the one thing that I've seen a lot talked about with him is his compete level. Uh, and I know that's something that that coach values here in, in Omaha. It's guys that, you know, even if you don't have the best talent or the best goal scorer or have the best hands or or that, like you you're out there wanting to make a difference. And um, from what I've heard and what I've seen, I would say he's one of those guys that just really wants to be on the ice, wants to be competitive you know, we'll do whatever it takes kind of thing. Um, and so I look forward to, I look forward to seeing that on the ice because, you know, sometimes it seems like we go through the motions a little bit and it doesn't seem like he's one to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you talk about this concept of, you know, sometimes the guys who aren't the most talented end up, uh, end up having a lot of success for UNO. And we saw that, uh, we saw that bear fruit last season with UNO in the second half of the season. You know, the guys who kind of rose to the top were not the guys who were the statistical giants. It was guys like Jacob Slipek, Brock Bremer, Jimmy Glenn. So, uh, you know, attitude will take you a long way. And credit to the fan base in Omaha, too. Like, you know, we'll always be there for anyone that's, uh, you know, worn a maverick. And, and you know, you always like to see the guys move on. But whether it's hockey or whether it's the community or whatnot, but I think it's amazing how people just attach to some of those like, you know, bottom roll guys and the grinders and that, and not just like, Oh, he's the leading scorer. And so he's the, he's suddenly our favorite. Like, you know, even the days of, of Gensel and that stuff, I remember people saying, you know, so-and-so is my favorite. And I'm like, he's on the third line. Still a fan favorite. 
Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, you talk about a guy, for example, like Ray Fust, who left the team in the offseason. A number of fans just absolutely loved him. So yeah. uh, Omaha fans have a way uh, of adopting the guys who are the lunch pail players, uh, who aren't the draft picks, who aren't the flashiest. And, and that's that's what uh, makes this fan base great. So turning to the forwards, it's always exciting to talk about the forwards. We've got some uh, transfers, some exciting freshmen coming in. Sam Stang, grad student, uh, transfer from Wisconsin this season, uh, played with uh, Zach Erdahl when Erdahl was at Wisconsin. Uh, he's had 13 goals, 16 assists in four seasons at Wisconsin. He only played seven games last season. He had a lower body injury. Uh, he was drafted 97th in the uh, fourth round of the NHL draft by the Detroit Red Wings in 2020. Uh, played baseball in high school. We've had a number of players like former Mavs Scott Parse, um, Victor Mancini. Uh, Bridget asked Victor uh, a question in one of the press conferences uh, last season about uh, playing baseball in high school. So you get a lot of these guys who are just really talented athletes all around. And in addition to playing at Wisconsin with Erdahl, they also played at Eau Claire North High in uh, high school. Uh, he majored in neurobiology at Wisconsin, Jason. I got to tell you, just reading that, I can tell he's a smart kid. Um, this is a guy that Coach Gabinette, uh at the uh, Golden Circle Lunch, which we uh, attended recently, said is probably going to be a every night kind of guy in the lineup. I'm not going to hold Coach Gabinet to that, but uh, hopefully this will be a situation like when Jake Pavanka came in a couple seasons ago. He was not a statistical giant at Notre Dame, but he comes to UNO, uh, has some really good chemistry with Tyler Weiss uh, and Pavanka had a really uh, great season here for the Mavericks. Uh, what do you think about uh, Sam Stang coming in from uh, Wisconsin? I heard someone refer to him as the lineup threat. What they meant by that was he's the kind of guy that could play up and down your roster, you know, has the the talent and the ability and obviously, you know, smart kid, right? So, you know, he's, he knows the game and, and has that. And so like, he's the kind of guy that even if he's not top line, you know, first night opening night kind of thing, like he's the one that every player on the team's thinking, if I don't continue to perform, he's going to take my job. Um, and so regardless of where he sits in the roster, you know, if he's every night, like, like coach said at that point in time, like it, it doesn't matter. Like he's there because if you're not performing, I can put him in your spot and you can ride the pine. And so I think that'll hopefully that'll motivate guys, right? Like hopefully that's going to push some of these guys to perform better and that stuff to try to keep their spot. Um, so Brady risk transfer from Alaska. This was a player that uh, Jason and I talked about uh, on the season finale of the map podcast when we were talking about potential transfer portal players, 36 goals, 44 assists in three seasons uh, at Alaska uh, in juniors. He had 79 goals, 85 assists in four seasons with the Drumheller dragons in the Alberta junior hockey league. Uh, UNO has had quite a bit of success the last few years with guys uh, out of Alberta played with fellow freshman miles Hillman for Drumheller in the 2019, 20 season. Uh, you got anything more to say uh, about Brady? I know you've said a lot about him already. Uh, you're very excited about uh, Brady risk coming in this season. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he's on your list for later. I don't know if he's next up on your list, um, but him and Israel's like, I was just honestly sh kind of shocked that they ended up coming here. You know, I, I heard all the rumors that they were considering it and just to actually have them on the roster, I'm super excited about it. Um, they're, they're two guys that I've always said probably would get more attention if they weren't in Alaska, and now they're not in Alaska. And so, you know, hopefully the success that they had um, in Alaska kind of continues. Um, you know, risk is a little bit smaller of a guy. Um, but I heard someone say uh, he's... Um, easily lost and hard to find. Um, and, you know, I think some of his junior day stuff, you find him just kind of like floating. And then all of a sudden 
bam, he's, you know, wide open and you get someone on a line with him that can find him. And that could be a real problem for teams in the NCHC. Um, and, you know, through the NCAA stuff, the out of conference things like that, that's a, that's a dangerous combo. If we can find someone who can feed him the puck um, and he keeps finding open areas. Absolutely. Right. Uh, very exciting. A uh, portal pickup uh, for you and O during, uh, during the off season. I am not talking about Israel's next because he was not on my list, Jason. So oh. you're just going to have to hold on before uh, you get to uh, get to give your analysis of him. But uh, a guy that is sure to end up on the all name team, not just for UNO, but in college hockey this season, Alexi Van Hoot Cachero, freshman, 5'8", 187 pounds. Uh, he's out of Quebec. He started uh, junior hockey, uh, his junior hockey tenure in the North American Hockey League. He uh, played with the West Kelowna Warriors in the BCHL with uh, incoming freshman Isaiah Norland and had 21 goals and 33 assists in uh, a season and a half with them. And then he finished the 2022-23 campaign with the Powell River Kings, had seven goals, 13 assists. Uh, He started with Powell River last season, had 10 goals and four assists, and then he finished up in the USHL with Sioux City and had two goals and three assists. So he's had a lot of playing experience and he's kind of he's started in North American Hockey League, then went to the BCHL and then went to the USHL. And that's just kind of kind of growing and progressing as he went along. Uh, Sounds like he's a good attitude player who brings positivity to the locker room and uh, obviously played with a lot of different teams, not the statistical giant with one team like where we always get excited about. But he's a guy that is kind of an intriguing freshman coming in this season. Yeah, definitely a team guy. I'd really love to have him on, you know, one of those podcasts or on like a, a Q&A or something or maybe one of the the early uh bring him out for the uh, press conferences and stuff after, because it would be a blast to uh, to get to talk to him and to have him with the microphone in front of him. So hopefully we get to see that this season. It'll be interesting to see how his name looks on the back of a jersey, Jason. Uh, I think, you know, I think when he was playing in the USHL, I saw that they just put the Cachero part on the okay. back of his jersey. So I don't think it's the to- whole Van Hoot Cachero, but another freshman that we've uh, been talking about for a while because before last season, we were eating dinner in Exarbon Village and we happened to run into Coach Noel Bernier and recruit Miles Hillman. And yes, it was just a complete coincidence. We're not, you know, we're not going to eat in Exarbon Village uh, looking for a uh, potential uh, incoming recruits. Uh, <laughs> To be eating dinner there. Uh, he's another small guy, 5'9, 187 pounds. Uh, he had 37 goals and 45 assists in three seasons with Drum Heller in the AJHL. He's had 43 goals and 29 assists in two seasons with Waterloo. He wore a letter four of five seasons in juniors. He was the captain of his team in three of those seasons, so he's a definite leader. Played with uh, Brady Risk. Uh, and Marcus Broberg during his junior career. I don't know if Coach Gabinet uh, is gonna is gonna let any of the freshmen wear a letter this season, but he's one of those guys I could uh, see with an A on his jersey this season. I was gonna say that if you ask me who of the the new players on the roster were most Gabinet like players this is the guy I would reach out to. Like, just like you think of who would Gabnet recruit, you look up and down this guy's career and you think like that's got Gabnet written all over it, you know, character guys, guys that have, you know, a lot of responsibility, who know, the game who, you know, don't falter in, in tough situations. And, you know, he's been productive. It's really hard with freshmen, especially, you know, the, the sub, sub six foot freshman, but everything says that he's going to, you know, excel here. Uh, and I look forward to watching that next forward coming in uh transfer from Minnesota, Garrett Pino Nimi. Jason is excited about pronouncing his name this season. Uh, he had three goals and three assists in two seasons uh, with Minnesota had 24 goals and 51 assists in three seasons with uh, Sioux Falls in the USHL when he was in juniors. 
Uh, he played with Sam Stang in juniors, along with former Mav Ray Fust. Going into juniors, he considered himself a playmaking center who took care of things on both ends of the ice. Uh, it sounds like he's a creative player in the offensive zone. So uh, what do you think of Garrett? I I love the, you know, the two-way playing. Uh, he just seems like a a no brainer for a third line. Cause you know, he can lock guys down. He can play against top lines. He's, he's shown already that he can do that. So you feel pretty good about him coming in um, and saying like, we can put him out there against some of the best guys in the NCAA or NCHC and, and he'll be successful still. And, and the fact that he can do it on both ends and not just be a, a defensive only kind of guy. Um, you know, that's that's what's going to elevate him in the lineup. And now we get to Harrison Israels. Again, the uh, other high profile uh, transfer from Alaska. Uh, whew, yeah, he was the Nanooks captain in the 2022-23 season and the 2023-24 season. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, played with fellow UNO transfer uh, Brady Risk. Uh, when he was in juniors, he played for the Ontario Junior Hockey League, and he was player of the year during his time in juniors. What do you think about Harrison? Uh, 33 goals, 20 assists in three seasons uh, with the Nanooks. Yeah, and another very productive guy. Um, another guy that just sounds like the kind of guy that that Gabnet wants on, on the Mavericks. Uh, and so super excited to see him play. I love his game. I love... Watching him for for Alaska, you know me. I, I watch a ton of hockey, and um, so I saw them play on some of the feeds and stuff. And um, you know, between him and Risk, I was like, when I saw them enter the portal, I was like, man, if we could get them, that would just be so encouraging. You know, heading into the next season, um, you know, like everyone else, though, like you hope it works out. It wouldn't be the first time that someone transferred and it just wasn't a good fit. And I uh, can't wait to get a chance to talk to him, too, because um, he, he may be the he may be the next guy that you start saying, God, we have to talk about that guy again, Jason. <laughs> yeah, Jason has a pension for picking the same player week after week after week is uh, his uh, his. But player. for good reasons. Come on. Yes, absolutely. We know that uh, we know how much uh, Jason loves Brock Bremer and loves to pick him. So now you got a new guy that you can pick to. And Jason is also thankful to the coaching staff for uh, for picking up Harrison Israels in the portal. So uh, so it made his prediction uh, on last season's season finale look good. Uh, freshman coming in this season that I'm excited about, Liam Watkins, 6'1", 199 pounds. Uh, he had 45 goals and 71 assists in three seasons with the Spruce Grove Saints in the Alberta Junior Hockey League. And as you know, Jason, I have a soft spot for those guys from the AJHL. Ty Mueller uh, came out of that league, one of my favorite players uh, in recent years. Uh, Watkins had 23 goals and 20 assists last season with the Des Moines Buccaneers. So that moving from the Alberta League to the USHL uh, continued his success. Uh, he played with fellow UNO freshman Joe Grammer last season with Des Moines. Uh, he plays well at the front of the net. Great awareness and patience. This is a freshman I'm really excited to see this season. It's always good to have your guy. I'll take mine and you take yours. And I, you know, I have a hard, like I have a hard time to put a beat on him because he is kind of a, a grinder guy. And this is a, this is a pretty heavy league. Can he handle the punishment he's going to take uh, in front of the net? Cause that seems to be where he makes his, his bank. Um, but we need that, right? Like we've talked about needing screens in some of the old teams where it's just like, uh, you know, back in the days of Gensel, right? Like with uh, Ortega, right? Those are those are guys that that are perimeter shooters, right? Um, and we needed we needed a grinder, we needed a guy in front of the net, and so if he can find some chemistry with some of the other guys, where uh, you know, he's setting those screens, he's getting those tips, he's um, wreaking some havoc, causing, causing some problems in front. Uh, it could be a, a nice long season with UNO for him. It'll be fascinating to see how some of these freshmen uh, fit in. Uh, as a number of people know, I'm always excited about the guys coming in directly from juniors. Jason loves uh, some of these uh, portal players. So mm -hmm. uh, different philosophies on our part, but uh, I'm excited. And then the, uh, Final new forward coming in this season, Chase LaPinta. 
5'8", 174 pounds. He was a former Arizona State uh, commit. He's a Texas native, played at Shattuck St. Mary's in the 2021-22 season. I'm always excited to get those uh, guys from Shattuck because uh, they tend to be uh, talented players. Uh, had 34 goals and 22 assists in 56 games with the Minot Minotauros. Uh, in the 2022-23 season in the North American Hockey League, played for the Dubuque Fighting Saints and uh, the Sioux Falls Stampede in the 2023-24 season, and he tallied a total of 21 goals and 25 assists last season. According to the Hockey News, he is confident with the puck and has a knack for finding open space in the offensive zone. Uh, so he shoots the puck well and skates well. He has speed. But like you said, Jason, you know, with the freshman, you never know how it's going to be out of the gate because there's always that adjustment from juniors to the collegiate ranks, especially in a meat grinder league like the NCHC. Well, and we've heard, I have to remember, I think it was, I don't remember the player, but I remember the interview with North Dakota that they did up there. And, you know, what the player said, well, yeah, it was incoming freshman. He's like, yeah, but everyone here skates well and everyone here plays well. And, you know, I think that's the biggest thing with some of these guys coming in. And and part of the reason why I shy away from, you know, touting up too many freshmen for me, like the problem is, is like, I love what you did in juniors. I love what you've been doing, the trajectory that you have. I'm really excited for you to be here, but it's not an uncommon story for these kids just to kind of flatline and hit a ceiling when they get to the to the NCAA ranks because everyone plays well. Everyone knows how to skate. Everyone knows how to play defense. And so, yeah, you could find space you know, when you're younger, but can you find it here? um with with these teams in this league with this level of talent and um but I, you know what you said like it reminds me of what i just said about risk right like this seems like the freshman version of risk and you know if he can kind of look to that and and if we get that if we get the freshman version of that like that's super exciting it's going to be very exciting very interesting to see uh I have confidence that this coaching staff is going to find a place for these players. Uh, we've got one new goalie coming in this season, Kevin Radler, a freshman, 6'6", 206 pounds. And just for those listening, I got the height and weight off of the UNO website. So if there are any discrepancies with elite prospects or hockey DB, you can blame it on the athletic department <laughs> or Ottawa's website as it is. <laughs> I right. really want to know who's, I think they need to step on the scale and stand on a ruler for us so that we can figure out once and for all who's right and who's wrong on these numbers. Cause man, there are some discrepancies in these. Absolutely. Right. And, and I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming UNO uh, weighed them and measured them, but, uh, but I don't know that for sure, which I Raidler, which I keep wanting to say Raidler, um, because pronunciation wise, it looks that way, but it's Raidler. Since we we're early in the season uh, is from Sweden, like Broberg. Uh, he was taken in the 2022 NHL entry draft by Ottawa, 151st overall in the fifth round. 2023-24 uh, season was his first season playing in North America. He had a 2.86 goals against average and a .902 save percentage in 39 games with Dubuque. He played with fellow UNO freshman Chase Lapinta at Dubuque last season. Uh, he catches left. Obviously, Simon Lacozzi is our guy. We love Simon. Uh, Simon's going into his uh, junior season here at UNO, but uh, Raidler is going to be, I think, an interesting option uh, in the lineup this season. Yeah, super talented. Uh, lots of lots of chatter around, you know, his talent. They may be too talented at net. Um, there's a couple guys that are are committed to come here in the next couple years um, that look like they're really good right behind Raidler and Lakotsi. And if they're both sticking around for two more seasons, like there's only so many minutes to play for goalies. Um, so yeah, uh, like super excited to see what he can do here. Um, I always like that, that these guys come over from Europe, like, uh, like Cozy did and, you know, they play a year 
in the US before or Canada before coming to um the NCAA because it is a it is a different game and and angles and I've heard um Rob talk about this with the goalies when he was first working with uh UNO that it it throws everything off with where space is and stuff and and more so with goalies than anything else and so I look forward to seeing his development and you know he may be a, a great pick up after Lakotsi leaves whenever that may be absolutely right and yeah you talk about the ring size being different uh between uh north america and sweden so uh that definitely is a factor and yes jason alluded to a player that i know he's dying to talk about which is uno recruit luca cloutier uh who was drafted by the colorado avalanche this off season and i will tell you when cloutier <clears throat> makes his way to omaha jason's going to be demanding he be in net every night because uh <laughs> we know how jason feels about uh draft picks of his beloved avalanche so uh that will be interesting to see i thought maybe he might be coming in this season uh, but he didn't so those are the newcomers meshing into the roster half of the team is new this season and as jason alluded to it's going to be interesting to see how these guys find chemistry together because this isn't a situation where you've got you know a very veteran stacked roster where you know a few guys are going to kind of mesh in here or there and be able to work with the guys who've been uh holding down the fort here in Omaha. We may see lines this season uh, with uh, players who are brand new to UNO. And Jason came up with his kind of hypothetical lineup for the team uh, in the early stages of the season. I am sure there will be many fans out there who disagree with Jason's picks. So I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Uh, in the comments uh, below this video on YouTube and uh, on our social media. Jason, do you want to run down? Uh, do you want to run down the players you could see uh, playing in a, a lineup uh, one night uh, very soon for UNO? Yeah, I'd love to. And I think you did a, a really good job of highlighting it with all the new guys coming in. You know, the thing that's going to be key, these guys that have played together you know, in juniors, even if it was three, four, five years ago or something like that, you know, at least they have some um, feel for each other. Uh, and and I think that's going to be key, right? Like with, you don't have guys that have played our system our way for, you know, two years or something like that coming back. Um, even with the guys that are coming back, like a lot of the guys that they relied on last season are not here. Um Tanner Lucky is a, is a prime example, right? Like you don't have Mueller there. You, you, in the past, you've kind of been able to, in the, in, in this past season, like he's been able to kind of, I don't want to say hide because it's a terrible way of saying it for a guy that's super talented, but like you always had Mueller there and that was kind of a one, two, two punch. Right. And so teams are going to scout us and they're going to look at this and he's the guy that they're going to put a label on and a number on and say, we're keeping him off the score sheet, right? And so how does he handle that season, this season? Um, and it's going to come down to, can he find some chemistry with the guys that are around him? Because um, he's not going to be able to do it himself and no one will. Um, so, yeah. So I think a lot of what you highlighted with where they've played before um, and who they played with and things like that, I think will come out. Uh, I think the, the goalie is the easy thing to start. I think, I don't know that anyone's going to get controversial. There's no hot takes in here. Um, I think it's Lakotsi's net until he decides he doesn't want it anymore and and isn't producing. Um, I think Raylor's gonna push him. That's that's a very talented guy sitting behind you. Um, not like Simon hasn't seen it before, but um if if Simon does falter, if he does have problems for some reason or something, um, it seems very capable of bringing in, even though he's a freshman, bring in that freshman um and give him quality reps. Um but I can't, I don't see Simon losing the job. I see him as the number one goaltender all the way through. I'm hoping that we can give him more of a break that, that he doesn't play so many games and he's more rested come uh, NCHC tournament, come uh, NCAA push, things like that. Um, and then I think Craig's uh, your, your standard third string goaltender, right? Like um, the, everything that we've done for guys that are like, never got a chance to, and then they, they get out there and it's like, 
five minutes of ice time for a goalie that's been here for five years kind of thing. It's just like, I love seeing that Craig's a great guy. Um, you know, I, I love that he's here. It's just, unfortunately there's two really talented guys ahead of him. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And of course we, uh, love Simon, uh, has done a great job. Very, been a very steady, dependable goaltender for UNO. Uh, and it's been great to have him in net, uh, just a great attitude guy. He's the kind of guy who uh, meshes with that uh, philosophy of uh, Coach Gabinet and the staff. So, uh, like you mentioned, very intriguing, though, to have uh, Kevin Radler here. Uh, it's a good, good time to get uh, a new goaltender, what looks to be a talented goaltender, uh, some time under the belt, especially early in the season. Uh, I can see uh, Raidler uh, getting some net time, so it'll be interesting. But it's good to have Simon back, especially with all these new players. Uh, Jason, when you're looking at the skaters, who do you like on uh, on your uh, on your top line? Yeah, I think forwards. Uh, I like Israel's. I like Risk. We've talked about that, so I've got them as my quote unquote top line. Um, I just think. Like, I don't want to say it's a starting lineup, right? Like, everyone's like, what's your starting line? I'm like, I, my coaching style is like, I put guys out there for reasons. And so, like, I would not be afraid to throw a fourth line starting line out there, what would be considered a fourth line, right? Like, I think you 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 adapt to the the um, situation and you put guys out there that are going to be successful in certain ways and, and you play a little bit of that mind game. Um, but I like Israel's and risk together. So I had them as a, as a pairing, uh, the hardest thing for me. And I think what fans may, you know, disagree with me and, and start chattering in the comments below. Um, I put slip on that line. I think there's a lot of intrigue with, with where he can be and, and kind of where his ceiling is. And, and I think there's an, an extra gear with slip that we haven't seen, um, and it just seems like that kind of style could fit well with the reliability of Israel's and and his his hockey intelligence um, and risk being able to find open areas. I, I that could be a really dangerous combination, I think. Uh, and so I put him up there. I'm going to keep going down the forward list. So okay. I've got Tanner Lucky and Bremer together. Um, you mentioned I love Bremer. Uh, great guy love his just like get under guy's skin and i just think like putting someone out there on a line with tanner that takes some of the intention away from tanner is just going to be like annoying to teams right because you can't key up on both of them but one of them's just aggravates you and you you want to key up on bremer and but you know you can't right and it'll just frustrate i think some teams that are not disciplined so I looked for a guy that kind of complemented that and 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 could play a little bit of that style of game, but still had, you know, the talent enough that if Tanner needs to pass to him or like he can be there to bang in rebounds, has some size. I put Erdahl there because I think he's the kind of guy that that can play that kind of game. And he's OK not being the guy on a line. Um, and he's he's been that while he's been here. And so I I think he could fit well into that line oh yeah that that i could definitely see uh that trio of forwards on a top line for uno this season so i like the looks of that and just to go back to uh jacob slipick he's a guy who obviously because we had a lot of talented forwards on the team i'm not sure he got uh the look uh that he deserved to get and he's a guy great attitude guy very talented guy over the years you and i have been very high on him so this could be a breakthrough season for him and i'm hoping with all the new players on the roster uh he uh, takes advantage of that opportunity uh and shines this season and we talked about it uh earlier but um with staunch you know there's there's a guy there hunting for your job right and that's an easy role to put him into if Slipek struggles, right? So there's going to be some pressure on him to perform, to to come out of the gate and and show that he can play at that level and 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 be that guy. Um, and if he's not, like, there's plenty of other guys that we can we can pitch into that sign that that role. 
Well, exactly. And you look at Stang and Erdahl having played together in high school, having played together at Wisconsin, those two might end up on a line together just because they've got chemistry from the past. So that's a, that's a, there's a lot of very interesting potential here for the players. And Jason, I know you don't want me to call it your third line, but we're just going down the list. So I'm going to call it uh, call <laughs> third it on the your, list. Yeah. Your third set of forwards here, uh, Miles Hillman, who, as I mentioned, I, I think he, uh, I think he will find his way into the starting lineup. Uh, Garrett Pinonimi and uh, one of my favorites, Tyler Rollwagon. Uh, I'm hoping Tyler can have a great season. One of my favorite players, great attitude guy. Uh, w- loved watching him on the ice. Uh, he had a really solid season uh, during his sophomore campaign last season. Yeah, love the character. I love this line for the reliability i look for a third line that gives me the same thing every day every minute every shift i want a third line i can rely on these are guys that seem like guys even like shockingly putting a freshman on there was was i put him there and just went i cannot believe i'm doing this but i just i i i see a lot of good things out of hillman and and i i really hope that he can kind of rise to that um that occasion and i just i see it working well and i hope that it does um but that's what i'm really looking for out of that line that quote unquote third line is that reliability that's the that's the line you're going to call on to get some things done and i think these guys can get it done and then the quote unquote fourth line i'm looking for grinders i'm looking for guys that just can go in there and draw penalties um wreak havoc make make life miserable for teams um you know that's capable of blocking shots and shutting down some lines and so you know i looked at glenn i think he's he's a guy that's been around he knows what we're doing he knows where we're going staying uh you know i we talked about him being super reliable and blocking shots and that stuff and he's been around the block this is in his first year you know i think that works well in there like that other wing is that's that was the hardest thing is who goes in there right like who's gonna play that because it's not that i don't like the other guys right like i think that's what's gonna come out of for a lot of people that's gonna come out of this is like jason doesn't have faith in so and so or so and so or so and so and it's really not that it's just that's a fourth line i need a guy there that can that can do something specifically and i would never put tanner lucky on that wing with these guys right like that's not what his game is and that's not where he's going to be successful um i put mitchell there um, you know, again, knows the system, knows what we're trying to do. He's a guy I hope that we can count on. And if not, I've got three guys that we can try there. So absolutely. That's an intriguing pick with Cam Mitchell. You know, he's a guy uh, we've been waiting, uh, waiting to see him have uh, his day in the lineup. He played 14 games his freshman season for UNO, 13 games last season. But this is a guy in his final season with the Omaha Lancers in 58 games, had 12 goals and 19 assists. So the potential is there again. I think he's just a guy on a, a deep lineup who just didn't have a lot of opportunities. So I hope this season is a, a season that, uh, that he finds the kind of success. Uh, Jason, you got a couple more forwards there. Uh, like I told you, Liam Watkins, uh, is a guy that, uh, I'm excited about in the lineup this season. Uh, I think uh, if he adjusts well to the college game, he could have a big season. And then you got another freshman, uh, freshman in the mix there, uh, Chase LaPinta. Yeah, and then uh, the super long name, uh, <laughs> Van Van Hout uh, Van Hootkeshero. I gotta, yeah. I gotta tell you, Jay, this is gonna be a brutal year for Jason <laughs> in the life. I'm gonna Jason, struggle with that one, Jason. You're gonna have to stick with the players whose names you <laughs> can pronounce. And, and I will be talking about the Alexi Van Hootkesheros of the world. So, uh, L- like I said, I think a lot of people are gonna, you know, look at that and and think that it's it's some knock on them. It's Honestly, you know, it, it's really just a. I see those guys in different roles. And so they're the ones that, you know, someone in one of those top three lines falters. These are the guys I'm looking at taking their spots. Um, they just didn't fit for me early on looking at this. But there's a lot of hockey to play and we haven't seen anyone on the ice and we don't know what's going on in the locker rooms. And for all we know, there's a lot of chemistry coming out of here. And that's that as 
as a coach, as, as a player, I've always talked about chemistry guys that play well together will always overperform. Um, and so hopefully we find some guys that, that like Mitchell's an example, right? Like I would say that he hasn't found chemistry with guys, not that he's not talented, um, or that he's underperformed at UNO. I would say he just, he hasn't found that role and he hasn't found that chemistry to be successful. And that's why we've seen him play a dozen games, um, instead of an entire season kind of thing. So yeah, absolutely. talk about our D men now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I'm going to start off with a bit of a hot take. Uh, I think it's obvious Krenzen, you know, probably one of our most reliable best defensemen out there right now. I, I put him with one of the freshmen. I put him with Norlin. Uh, I, I, there's a lot to like about his game. I hope that he hits the ground running. Uh, and I think that pairing him with a guy that knows what's going on and can be reliable. Um, you know, it's a, it's a recipe that has been very successful in the NHL of you'll complain about this john um but Makar and taves it's your flashy Makar who's out there skating circles around guys and he can do that because he knows that taves is back there on the back end and is solid on d um so i think that that's that's the kind of combination i'm looking for on that top line and and this could be fun to watch if these guys uh, really find some of that chemistry and and can rely on each other that way. Krenzen, we have heard, is going to be the team's captain this season. Very, very happy that he came back. Very dependable, solid blue liner for UNO. And like we said, Norland's one of the freshmen that we're very excited about. Uh, next, next down the list, uh, Jason has Griffin Ludke and uh, Jacob Gavin uh, on your Hypothetical lines, you've got Tanner uh, and Griffin uh, out there on the ice uh, together. Both of those players have been really solid defensemen. And you talk about players kind of rising to the surface after kind of a quiet season. Griffin Ludke was a guy, uh, his freshman season, uh, didn't find his way into the lineup that much. But last season, he had a lot of success for you. Mm -hmm. And we saw this combination a few times throughout the year, and and there was there was a lot of excitement around it. It seems logical, like from what we saw last season, that these two guys would get paired together, and um, you know, hopefully it works out. But um, yeah, I I saw that last season, and it was like I really seem to like a, something about that combination, and so I'm going with it for the season too. Yeah, uh, it's good. I mean, no, I mean it's going to be weird not having. Uh not having Joe LeMay in the lineup uh, with Jacob Gavin anymore. Uh, Joe LeMay uh, transferring from UNO. So it's uh, it's yeah. going to be interesting not having him in the lineup. Jason's a uh, third line defensive pairing. Yeah, I really liked Broberg's game. We talked about that when you're going through uh, the rundowns. Um, so I wanted him out there. The, the problem with putting a freshman out there, just like with Norlin, is like can you you can't put two of them right like you worry about putting two guys out there that haven't played at this level um so i really looked at putting some experience someone who who kind of knows um i put alice there right now i want to see if it works kind of thing um there's there's some like you do this well he does that well you know this guy does this well that guy doesn't and and that kind of like try to fill holes and and be um good at things that the other guy's not kind of thing um, and so that's kind of where I landed, but, um, again, just like with the forwards, like you're probably, you're going to run, you're going to take 60, you might take seven. Um, you know, the, uh, the other guys that are on the list after that are guys that are looking to steal a spot from someone who's not performing. Um, and that's where you'll see, you know, grammar and Grattan. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I, you know, I look at the veteran guys coming in like Gallagher and Grattan. So I would see those guys a little bit higher. But you just never know. Uh, Noah Ellis is a player uh, that I that I really liked. Uh, he transferred in from UMass last season. Didn't get as many opportunities as I'm sure he would have liked, but uh, he could have a big season for UNO uh, with those open spots in the lineup. You know, you talk a lot about chemistry. We hope that these guys get some chemistry together early on so that they can start to build a foundation early in the season. And it's just going to be interesting to see Uh interesting lineup. Uh, as I mentioned before, if, uh, if any of you have uh, ideas for line combinations uh, and pairings and uh, who you think we might see uh, in the uh, lineup on uh, 
opening night uh, starting for UNO, be sure to uh, comment uh, in the comments section or comment uh, on our social media posts where we uh, share this episode. Jason, yeah. any other thoughts about UNO's lineup going into the season? Just excited to see how things shake out. And I hope the fans are too. Lots of, lots of new guys to, to get to know. And so um, I think the biggest thing, I hope that, that the university does more of these types of things with the, the meet the team kind of things, because there are a lot of fan favorites that have left uh, for whatever reason. And, you know, we've got new guys here. And so uh, I know players have said that they appreciate the support of the fans and, and that interaction and engagement that they get with us um, is something that's unique to Omaha. Uh, I think, you know, even more than, than other other teams in the NCHC and certainly in teams in, in the NCAA. And so um, I hope we get a, a good chance to meet everyone gets a good chance to meet these guys and, and learn more about them and converse with them and connect with them. One little note here, we will be doing our NCHC uh, predictions for the season in an episode coming up. Uh, before the season so uh, stay tuned for that and of course be sure to follow Mav Puck on all of our social medias Facebook Twitter Instagram for all of the latest updates uh, and consider uh, signing up for a founding membership at mavpuck.com but till next time Jason go Mavs go Mavs